Hi everyone, welcome to Tech Talks. Today we're here with Dario Nardi, and we're going to discuss the four subtypes of the ISTP personality type. And so we'll begin with dominant. Dario calls this the success manager. And so dominant subtypes have predominant wiring at the front of their brain. It's correlated with the hormone testosterone. And so could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. So it's... Um... Uh, let's see, how shall we start? So the brain activity, the brain wiring, yeah, tends to be towards the front of the brain, like a lot of dominance, but because they're also introverts and ISTP is a pretty analytical type, we're going to get this very classic like front and left hemisphere. So think of like left brain, but also front of the brain. And you combine those together and you get somebody who is confident and driven and assertive and an interesting way that you can know ISTPs, uh, especially sorting the dominant from the others, is their voice tone. And um, it just has the, this, uh, I want to say, assertiveness to it, this assuredness or confidence. So it's almost like when they communicate that you're an employee and they're the manager. Not that they intend that. They just usually have experience in a leadership position. Um, and being introverts, you know, being out with people, isn't their most favorite activity at all. Um, but still they know how to sort of muster the troops and get things done with that. Uh, so that, that's something that does, um, show up. And in terms of career administration, business, science, technology, um, are often in a managerial position. I, I know this type pretty well. It's both my, my brother and my stepdad, not the subtype, but, but, but ISTP. Um, although I think my brother is probably the success manager, he would be a, a good example of that. Um, and what they really like, oh, oh and what really stood out is <laughs> three of the ISTPs were in the military or had been in the military when was going in. Um, and they were all the dominant subtype. And I was curious because especially one of the knowing type, and I asked him like, well, what is it that appeals to you about the military? Because it's a very SJ in environment. And he said, yeah, I just, he says the, the benefits outweigh the costs. And the, he was confident that he would find his way to maneuver and be his own man um, in, in what would otherwise be a very structured organization. Um, and I think that they're fine with that larger structure as long as they can make their own decisions, like enough of them inside of it. So not, not to paint a, like a, a, a big stereotype over it, but yes, they could be a manager at a tech firm, uh, or, or, a, you know, executive at a tech firm. They could be like a Navy SEAL. Um, they, you know, there really is this, like, uh, you say like the, the, the driven persistent realist. And there's this certainty and this sort of focus and clarity. And that's where the third function, we've talked about the third function with all of them, where it comes in and, and it provides this vision. Um, and, and so speaking of the functions, so sort of normally we start with that, but we're, we're going to end with that, I guess, on this one, um, is that the introverted thinking has this yang-like analytic quality. So they have a few models or principles that they trust very deeply. And when they approach a problem or when they're talking with somebody, they're looking and listening for how does this fit into the model that I trust, uh, which can make them a bit, uh, we want to say like uh, determined or, or stubborn. Um, because they're, they're really listening for how does this fit in a way that I think about it already. And by the way, if you're in tackling the situation, you need to, to approach it this way too. Um, and then the, the extroverted sensing is also this more yang analytical style. So it's more about movement and moving others. And there is this like a brusque, uh, assertiveness the physicality that comes with it. And often like the, the body itself also expresses that they're not going to be some like weak, meek, 
uh, you know, body type going with this confident person that um, the extroverted sensing is going to express that whether the background is athletics or martial arts uh, or just in general, like a health and fitness kind of stuff. And the third function might be different. Um, but if it is that more visionary style, that's probably going to push them to be in a really uh, maybe just visionary for themselves, but also for like their projects, for example. So as a project manager, they really are going to be the person that is, is especially with that extroverted sense saying like working through the problems and getting things done through the people that they're in charge of. And they have that in charge quality to them. Yeah, I could see that. And so how would you tell these ISTPs, the dominant ISTP, apart from an ESTP? Um, one, it's it's the still the self-contained body language. It's I use like the the crow as an example of an animal um, that it still has this stoic quality. And they definitely, when you mention something about like going out in nature or the beauty of nature or doing some sort of fun, maybe competitive activity uh, by themselves, then then they're very excited for that in a way that an ESTP would not. Um, because they still are ISTPs and they still have to like step outside um, of the the roles and sort of that drive and find ways to recharge. And, and that's usually in nature or some kind of hobby, like a tinkering kind of hobby. Especially if their job doesn't allow them to use their hands, then they need to use their hands in their hobby. Um, and I would say the other thing is too, is that the, the ESTP in this position is just very, I don't, I don't, like they're driving from A to B in, in a very like clear, but still like in like determined, maybe even brusque, but like socially sort of adept way. Uh, whereas ISTP still there's this cynicism, this uh, maybe sarcastic sense of humor, like there's a pessimism, there's a, yeah, we could all die tomorrow kind of response. Uh, not that they really think that, but but there is this um, the, this sort of uh, is not so smooth with people still, like within their job position, because that's some more clear roles and so on. That And in terms of roles, like that's something assigned to them. So it's a little bit clearer. Um, but, but you really notice is there's still this very self-contained body language that's there that has like this as a dominant judging type, this judging quality to them. I could totally see that. And so they're more comfortable with solo, solo activities is what I'm hearing. They're a little bit more stoic and still like a crow and all the other things you mentioned too. Very cool. And so I'm curious, Dario. Could you tell us a little bit about the creative subtype of ISTP? You call this the diverse designer. And with this ISTP, they have a starburst pattern in their brain wiring. And the subtype is correlated with dopamine in Helen Fisher's work. Yes, yes. So they, they are more exploratory. And the, 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 there is like a social element to them. Uh, what shows up is that they do have, yeah, this sort of like left brain bias a little bit in terms of executive function, um, but they also have the starburst pattern that's there. And it might be sort of a softer, weaker pattern, but many times it's actually not. It can be quite a, a strong starburst pattern. And they have this strong creative element that comes out. And this creativity is very much fused with their problem solving mindset. So for all ISTPs, they're really, everything comes back to introverted thinking, uh, and then the extroverted sensing is like the practical problem solving, but they have the starburst that really infuses a lot of creativity and imagination. And I'm thinking of one in particular. And so he was, uh, yes, he could do landscaping for people in a very conventional sense if they asked for it. Although he sort of discouraged that he's like, well, you hired me, like, let's do something interesting. Um, and his capacity to really like work with landscape and make something that becomes um, like all these different little pockets of interest. It's it's almost like the, the Japanese garden designer is built into the, the ISTP, this kind of ISTP. The other thing that shows up is this, with the Starburst pattern is like all of these creative tricks that they can pull out and this sort of trust in their gut 
uh, their, their intuition in a way, but just also this holistic, like, oh, th this is, oh, we could put this here and this plant would be perfect in this spot over here. Um, and so there really is like this exceptional capacity for design and, and it's artistic and the visual spatial thinking that goes with it. And I found something interesting also about them is that they're, they're, um, how shall I put it? Is like the ability to, to like take in everything at once in a way that the dominant or normalizing doesn't do gives them this um, like intuitive like quality to them and makes them very fast observant thinkers. So it's like they go into a situation and because they're more open, like they're not just waiting for inputs or like driving towards something that they're going to put into pre-assigned boxes. Um, that, that they're really sort of scanning and opening for like, oh, that's how that works. And it's something that maybe they've never even looked at before. So for example, let's say they go to a place that has uh, to continue with the the, the landscape design. Um, they see uh, how something is arranged, how the water is designed to flow in a certain way that interacts with the, the landscape and gravity. And there are some fixtures and very quickly their brain will take all of that in and see like, oh, this is how this works. And like a very physical, like engineering kind of sense to it. Um, and and it could of course uh, go into something else as well. Uh, you know, like law, or that this is how the legal system in this situation in the courtroom works. But I didn't find that that was so much the case that almost always that they were in some kind of creative profession. Architecture, uh, not just computers like sitting at a computer, like computer simulation games, fashion, uh, if they were going to do something like legal or financial or something like that, it's about financial modeling, um, industrial product design. I had ISTP who did like the, the actual packaging that you get, like you buy this object and you open it up and it has like little spaces for it. And I'm even thinking of like the earbuds that I have for my iPhone and how they're, it's all thought, very thoughtful about how people will use it and, and what is the most efficient design um sort of visually mechanically aesthetically like hitting all of those different variables and all of that requires sort of technical precision and also creativity uh, and a lot of very practical how-to knowledge that comes with it um and like the other istps yes they are uh more introverted and so they're usually going to prefer to do this kind of thing by themselves or maybe they're supervising a small group of people um we're working on a team, but generally speaking, uh, and then they also need time off. Um, and yeah, nature can appeal. I think though, with the dopamine, it's more about, uh, like travel, for example, and that having an interesting place visually and, and kinesthetically like uh, travel wise that can, you can do swimming or hiking, um, being able to, gosh, I met one actually here in Arizona, just randomly. Um, and, and he had just come back from the, uh, I guess, Southeast Asia, where he had gone swimming with sharks. And that that's quite a, and, and he was really gung-ho about what a special experience was and how novel. And um, that's a little bit of a stretch. And this is, by the way, a version that can look like uh, INTP or INTJ. Um but that, that's like a little bit of a bridge of extra sensing more than probably I'd want to do. Because, you know, the extroverted sensing ISTP doesn't shy away from risk. It's all, if it's a lot of risk, it will be calculated risk. But, but a lot of it is just this trust that, yeah, you know, experience it. Um, and uh, like exploring and, and know the options for exploring and, and uh, discover those as they go. You also mentioned, Dario, how this ISTP can be mistaken for an INTP or INTJ at times because they're like, oh, they're the creative subtype. And creative subtypes in general, if they're a sensing type, they may feel like they could be intuitive. Like, oh, I feel like I, I am a holistic thinker. I'm a big picture thinker because I use all parts of my brain possibly. Because a creative or dominant ISTP can have some stronger entrepreneurial or ability to want to take an opportunity, take a risk. And so it can look like, is that, 
is that T even in some ways? Like, is that extroverted thinking? Like, mm -hmm. it, it could be confusing because the S, E, and T, I in a certain flavor in the creative or dominant can look a little bit like um, pseudo, pseudo extroverted thinking in the I and T, J. Uh, it, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, you know, so there's a little little principle, on, and I've never published on the, on this per se, or let's say like mini model, that that for any particular domain, that it can usually be covered by two different functions. So if we think about like facts, for example, or uh, getting things done, that's they they can be extroverted sensing or it can be extroverted thinking. They do it differently, um, but that's still like extroverted sensing is like facts, especially the relevant facts. Um, and let's say get something done just to do something and extroverted thinking is more what what are the the facts we need to know that get this to to execute and complete properly. But still, there's a lot of overlap with those. And then this whole idea of getting things done is like having a checklist and and just like moving through that and building something or completing something. And And in terms of like, oh, yeah, you know, it, this could look like intuition. I really do think the third function is very relevant when we talk about all of the types, especially when we talk more than just, you know, like uh, young adults. But even with young adults, I think back to when I was 15 to 25 and introverted feeling was very important function. Like if I didn't, at least I became aware of functions then. Otherwise, it's like the, it's very with when we talk about two functions, it's two dimensional portrait. And wouldn't it be much better to have that like 3D virtual reality, uh, augmented reality? Uh, a portrait of a type. Um, and that's where the third function comes in. So there always is this intuition that's happening there. And, and I, I could easily see, and they have the same interaction style, like INTJ and ISTP. They're both chart the course. Um, and then this style, I, like I'm just looking at one now to confirm. And oh yeah, very much like there's a super strong starburst here. And he has also some diamond pattern. And uh, and he's just like very confused about, I, I mean, he's narrowed it down to like three type options. Um, but between those three, he's like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And and ISTP often doesn't feel like they need to settle exactly until it like really and truly fits. They're not going to force fit themselves because that's not their personality. But uh, I think this is an example where the subtypes can really help um, uh, for, for those folks who are like right on the line between, say, second and third function and that very much could move them into a different type. Like, it's like, no, there you go. You have this like creative starburst pattern. So, and the same when we get to ISFJ, like the creative subtype ISFJ probably usually types as INFJ. Um, I think where you know the difference with the ISTP is the physicality of the ISTP. Like the comfort that they really seem comfortable in their own body and, and moving around in it. And then they have this grounded feel as they're, they're moving um, and, and even just standing there that the sort of energetically and even in terms of posture and whatever, uh, INTJ or INTP is going to be more head-based. And the this all of the ISTPs are more like torso-based. Yeah. And the ISTP is also going to have more straightforward communication, more it is what it is, and this is what's in front of you, and I see the reality, I observe it more yeah 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 absolutely directly. because e even though like intjs can be directive there always is, is this caveat it seems like it looks like uh, it probably is um because introverted intuiting is very much like not just hedging bets but but is aware that nothing is quite what it seems whereas extroverted sensing is like well this is just what it is in front of us mm -hmm. yeah precisely so and so this moves us on to the normalizing subtype. Dario calls this the quiet troubleshooter. And so this ISTP has more of an even field pattern in their brain. And this subtype is correlated with the hormone serotonin. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So in terms of the brain wiring, we, we still see this uh, a little bit like, like of all the normalizing folks, a little bit of a, a farm or say quilt pattern. It's like you're looking down and you see a lot of like one-on-one -on -one individual connections covering the whole brain. But for this ISTP, like uh, probably all the normalizing IT types, there really is a lot of back bias and also some left hemisphere, left brain bias. And that back bias is really a lot about processing um, 
you know, all, all of the, like what's going on, what they're hearing, what they're seeing, like thinking about it in their head, observing, like putting the pieces together as they're watching. Um, and, and at the same time, they also know how to survive in everyday society. And they have this like a little bit of a conventional veneer on them um, and could maybe seem like ISTJ. That said, um, I do think that this is probably the, the normalizing ISTP is the stereotype within the Myers-Briggs world. So this is a type that people are like, oh, the car mechanic, for example, like, or the, the radiology technician um, or the construction worker. Uh, these are the ideas that people have in mind when they learn about type. Um, and I think that comes from a, both from Isabel Myers and then later from David Kiersey and the way he rose, wrote up uh, ISTP is, is that we see very much this, this uh, normalizing version. It's like very private and um, very, very grounded, observant, doesn't say very much, uh, is probably not going to be listening a lot either unless it's something important to listen to. And when they do, they draw a conclusion very quickly about what it is that the person is saying, not, not just like capturing everything they're saying or making assumptions, but um, being like, oh, is this person like talking about anything related to reality at this moment? Do they know what they're talking about? Is this, is this somebody that's worth listening to is like repairing my car or whatever it is? Um, they're much more hands-on, like a fix it, take it apart, uh, examine it, explore it kind of person. So very, very grounded in, in this regard. Um, let's see some other things that we could say. Well, what are the, the professions that I saw? Um, because they have this more um, conventional veneer that they can easily work uh, in, in a, a corporate environment and they're not driven towards leadership. They're usually pretty happy in the position that they're in because they get to do their troubleshooting quietly thus the name. Um, so they could be an accountant, uh, they could be like a lab biologist, um, computer programmer that actually has, you know, their, their, their cubicle that they're working in. Uh, I mentioned like a mechanic. Um, it could also be like a nature photographer and to update a little bit more to, to like technological professions. It could be somebody who's like a web designer, web developer, um, also, uh, athlete, um, al although it does take quite a bit to be driven. So most likely they were an athlete early on because they had the talent and physicality and the endurance for it, uh, of the daily routines and like really enjoyed all of that. And then they end up being like a school coach, for example. Um, so there, there's uh, all these like conventional technical service jobs. Uh, that really they fit in very quickly. They're using their hands, they're moving around, they need to be observant, they need to have a lot of knowledge. Um, it's not super stressful or anything like that. Uh, they, they find a way to, to adapt to the environment that they're in. It's the same we heard of the dominant ones talking about, oh, going into the military, um, is that th there is this attitude like, oh, I can figure out how to adapt to this and work around it and maintain my autonomy. And that's the same thing that they, they have this is comfortable here. Um, and usually their, their analytical skills are really directed towards their job um, and that their family life and their friends and so on, unlike the dominant version, they're usually going to be more chill about that. Uh, and there just really is the strong sense of, of I'm going to say like, you, you know, like that three-year-old extroverted feeling to use the, the personality hacker car model. Uh, it's just like, yeah, these are the people, this is my family, this is my community. Um, and they're not going to really stand out in a big way from that. Like they're going to be comfortable with that and, and, you know, very supportive of their family and their social roles and that kind of thing. Yeah, I could totally see that. I have a question, Dario. So for someone who plays a lot of video games, what do you think it would do to their brain wiring as a hypothesis? Well, you know, I, I had years ago this um, student who, uh, he, the, one of the lab students who was really curious about this question. Um, and so he arranged over the course of the 10 weeks for people to, who were in the lab to be playing a lot of different video games. Um, 
of, of different kinds. So Mario Kart is one kind of game where it's like there's no really strategy involved. It's just tremendous in the moment tactical adjustments versus another game like Civilization, which actually is much more slower pace and requires more strategic thinking. Uh, and then a variety of games in between. And he also looked at one that was supposedly like a, a brain builder game. I mean, that's how it was, how it advertised itself, you know, encouraging like the prefrontal cortex to, to have strong connections. Um, so uh, some of it, I, I think, depends on the kind of game. Uh, in my experience, ISTPs love tactical shooter games. Um, my brother is a huge fan of tactical shooter games. Um, and, uh, you know, my personal advice is for, for anyone who likes those, regardless of type, but particularly for the SPs, like just send them to play paintball um, or, or get on the, I, I could say like get on the soccer field or something like that. But sports often is not something that you just do in the spur of the moment in the way that you'd be like, yeah, I just want to chill out for like an hour or two with a video game. Um, so I, I do see the appeal that it allows them to use their tactical intelligence, the sort of this left parietal area that has all of these hunting and, and dare we even say like combat related skills, um, ha noticing things in the environment, uh, what are called oddball tasks. So it's like, where's Waldo is an example. Um, or just like if things are, you know, flashing on the screen and whenever a certain kind of thing flashes, then can you, do you have the hand-eye coordination to grab that and take advantage of it, um, and move it or shoot it or whatever you need to do? Um, where, where does my body end and th the rest of the world begin? Um, and this, this like uh, left parietal area is a very common hub or, or a very active area for ISTPs. So it's all of these skills and the same thing with basketball, like where am I and I'm moving and where is the ball and the ball is moving and where are my teammates and opponents and all of them are moving too, and being able to process all of that really quickly within a framework of rules, like game rules or combat strategy that was given to them or that they worked out, you know, whatever it was. Um, and so I could say that, you know, some, some, first of all, I would say video games are much better for your brain than television, uh, unless it truly is like a very, uh, I don't know, like a mindless game. Um, but for the most part, video games can encourage tactics. Uh, they might encourage some strategy. They encourage a lot of hand-eye coordination and responsiveness. They're basically giving people the opportunity to develop skills that we don't really get to develop in everyday life, but evolutionarily over eons. Yes, that would, those were all skills that like we we're like built in to develop and have. And if those are their talents, where do they get to do those? Um, and those can translate more abstractly. I mean, this is a reason reason why like football or basketball or whatever is used as metaphors sometimes to explain to people like, oh, this is how we need to do like work this business situation. Um, is if we use the metaphor of Maybe maybe SJs are more about football and and baseball and SPs are more about basketball uh, because basketball is very tactical and fast paced um, or soccer uh, is is a very SP as well. I, I would say in terms of like the brain skills and what they support. That is so cool. So thank you for sharing certain types in the relationship with video games, probably in Milo in some way too, mm. if I looked hard enough. Um, and so, oh, so Milo one thing did, did occur to me. Um, sorry. Uh, one thing I would add is that how, how does the sensing show up uh, in each one? And here it's less about physical movement. Uh, although there is that it's more about precision use of their hands and observing the environment, and importantly, having a giant, I, I wanna say like a working knowledge or, or the ability to, to identify what are the, like all the different kinds of plants in my environment, or all of the different kinds of animals, or all of the different kinds of cars, like that also is very left parietal area, and something that, that I mean, sensing types in general, yes, but ISTP in particular can really know like 500 or more different kinds of plants or cars and every single like model, but the options that go with the models and all of that. So the, their brain is really very expansive and, and so the normalizing subtype 
whatever domain they're in, similar to the INTP who's normalizing, has this like tremendous command of all of the different options and, and makes and models, so to speak, of, of the domain that they work in and the tools that they can use. Yeah, that is well said, Dario. Uh, and so um, I'm just taking it all in. You, you, and you were going to ask about Milo or something? You were going to say something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, th this is all great information and research. And so I, I, I just wonder if Milo might have also some articles on video games and type. And the reason why I asked about video games is I know quite a few ISTPs and INTPs who are avid gamers. And I'm like, what does that do to their brain? Do, does it affect their subtype? Because they almost play video games as much as as much as they go to their job. So I was yeah, like, yeah. that must really impact brain wiring in some way. Just like how when you, you talk about how you meditate, your brain actually looks different. And I'm like, oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah. I, I, I do see it a lot is that the, the kind of job that they're doing is probably grossly un under stimulating for the the amount of action and sort of like live in situ tactical problem solving that their brain is built for. And, and so the reason they're drawn to the video games is because it's really providing something that modern society just that then their job or whatnot doesn't provide them. Yeah. It's, it's uh, almost a waste of their brains, unfortunately, like whatever their job is, um, because we simply don't have the same kinds of needs that the people did even, you know, 500 years ago, much less 5,000 years ago. Yeah. And that's a great way of depathologizing people who might struggle with their work or even school. It's like, perhaps it's not it's not you that's the problem it's actually your brain has certain superpowers and your superpowers are underutilized dramatically in your life so your brain is just you're just trying to naturally cope with that deficit so mm -hmm. it's like that's really I, important I think, yeah I, istp is one of those types that if um like a parents are feeling like oh we're having difficulty with our our istp child i'm like there are so many obvious solutions to, to work with them, it's, it's uh, they're, they're acting out or being difficult or whatever, they're, they're, not, they're not doing anything, whatever it is, not doing well in school because they're literally like under challenged in the wrong environment. And, and if you just give them something, just like, oh, if you don't wanna see them playing video games all day long, like they're actually interested if you go and take them to like a paintball session or something like that. It's like, oh yes, then we're like doing things for real. Um, and that's even more exciting to them. So I, I would say for parents, like step it up and for board ISTP is like step it up. Um, that, that there's like a whole bunch of outlets that, that are designed for, for frustrated SPs. Mm, yeah, well put, well put. And so to bring it back to the subtypes, we have the harmonizing subtype and Dario calls this the humane investigator. And mm -hmm. so this brain pattern is a, multi-diamond shape in your brain wiring. Mm -hmm. And it is correlated with the hormones, estrogen and oxytocin. Yeah, so th this is definitely, this is a version of ISTP um, that probably has a really tough time self-identifying as ISTP. Um, maybe to the people closest to them, it will seem obvious, but um, usually they're in a profession and they think about things in a way that doesn't instantly match the stereotypes. Although, again, I think um, a lot of times because ISTP so enjoy like doing outdoor stuff or technical stuff, using their hands, being practical, um, having something to do with the body, uh, that you could find them in a role where, yeah, they do need to be more one-on-one. -on -one. And, and that's how I see this, the empathy coming in is the, the harmonizing is this like a one-on-one -on -one activity that's going on. So the domain of problem solving isn't, the landscape and it isn't the the computer uh programming environment or the video game or the 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 military or company you know or organization the the object of problem solving is other human beings and so here we end up with this hands-on element with people so it could be anthropologist you're going out you're observing you're gathering data and you're using models to analyze that uh, and the fun thing about anthropology and having taught in anthropology is I feel like anthropology is the cool social science uh, because you like you should be going somewhere and doing things. 
um, whether that's like taking pictures of primates or, uh, you know, digging up bones somewhere. There's a little bit of a, it may be Indiana Jones stereotype with that. And I wouldn't say this kind of ISTP is. If it is, it's the real Indiana Jones, not not the slick uh, Harrison Ford version. Um, a profession like chiropractor or acupuncturist, where you need to have, or, or herbalist. In fact, probably they're going to combine all of those things because this is, ISTPs usually have softer boundaries in their models than INTPs do because the the inner, the third function, introverted intuiting, is very hazy and fuzzy. And INTPs, their introverted sensing is much more like clarifying and crisp and, and wanting the precise words and so on. ISTP is like whatever words. Um, and, and so they're, they're going to bring in this like learnings from different directions. So massage therapy done in this particular culture, say in Korea, massage and how that's different from Thai massage. I've had some amazing massage therapists over the years. I, I sort of have to encounter them because I travel and it's stressful. And I was like, I can look for a massage place. And, and I just know almost immediately when I go in, if I can tell that they're an ISTP, uh, like some elderly ISTP mas Thai massage therapist, I'm like, oh, I know she's going to do a great job with me. I have nothing to worry about. Completely just put myself in her hands. And, and there, there's just like awareness of just as like a person could look at the landscape or look at the, the, the computing environment and they're going to look at the body the way the person moves, their facial expressions. Um, and in fact, the whole sort of like sub movement, and it's a small sub movement in type to look at physiology, like where do people move their eyes and how do they, where's the, their orientation? Are they head based or like uh, gut based or leg based? Um, the structure of the face, all of that. Like that's a very extroverted sensing or can be, I think that's its natural grounding. And ISTP, like this version in particular just does that automatically. Um, they notice so much about like eye contact, for example, and, and what eye contact says about very primal things like dominance in hierarchies. So right away, they can walk into a space and be aware of like, oh, is this person more dominant or more submissive in, in the environment that they're in? Like, uh, just the way that they carry themselves, like their shoulders and their head and all of these things. So whether, even if it's more abstract, it's something like, uh, nutritionist or uh, psychologist, um, that there very much is this like very quick intuitive grasp. And, and what we see in the brain is, well, one is they don't have that classic halo pattern so that they're not going to come off as well adjusted. In fact, the harmonizing ISTP is probably among the weirdest of all of the types from like a social point of view. They're just sort of weirdos and, and that's the way it is. Um, uh, but they they have internally like these these diamond networks that connect left and right hemisphere, the front and the back of the brain, and they get into their mode, their their observational mode with the client. And I had such a great experience when I went to Australia one time, and my very last I had a day that I was spending at a um, wellness clinic, um, before getting on the airplane and. I had already been in conferences and moving around and packing and I was worried about the airplane and um, I had a horrible, horrible headache. I don't get migraines, but it was probably as about as bad as it could get in muscle tension and all of that. And at the wellness clinic, there was an ISTP who was trained in China in classical Chinese techniques. And I'd never done acupuncture before, but he's like, well, I don't have time to see you, but I am teaching a class. Can I use you as the subject to demonstrate to our students? And of course I said, yes, because I'm like, I feel miserable. I don't know how I'm going to survive on an airplane for like 15 hours like this. Um, and he wasn't one of those. And it contrasts with an ISTJ that I saw later. And some of it is schools of training, but the ISTJ just like put the the, the needles in the appropriate places and then like left and I, I don't know, like read the newspaper for half an hour and came back. This ISTP now. The ISTP was like continuously working on me, observing, making adjustments, putting it more in, taking something out, this and the entire time, the whole 50 minutes. And when I got off that table, I'm like, oh my God, I feel like a totally new person, like a completely new person. And this wasn't even a bunch of like big adjustments or stretching or anything. Like, I mean, there was a little bit of that because they always bring in something extra. 
but the the this humane investigator i say this because oftentimes they can be in their they're sort of professionally they're expressing their opposite type so you might oh i'm helping people and helping them grow or do better or whatever it is and that sounds sort of like it's a nice fusion of stp and nfj in into one thing but what they're doing is they're investigating as they go so it's very tactical investigating it's not just like analyze and prescribe it's like continuous as they go treatment and they make really really fantastic uh practitioners in that regard with, with people um they're just their understanding of the human being Unlike intuiting types who usually come with this idea, it's like, especially MPs, oh, it's all in your head. It's all the stories that you tell. And if you told yourself a different story, you're going to do so much better, um, which can be true. But there's all the body is like a really big piece of it and, and the ability to just interact with body and mind and how those connect together. So really, really good, like body, mind awareness. I mean, ISTP, I've met several that also would be uh, probably humane investigator, but to fill this role as a shaman or uh you know like a, some kind of healthcare person um th there's a spiritual element to it too so martial arts would also be an example um and not just martial arts for exercise like maybe normalizing or dominant would do but martial arts is like truly in the practice of it with the meditation and the the altered state of consciousness and that intuitive side um so uh, I, I think for this type, it's it's the the quote least grounded, the subtype of the ISTPs. Um, I mean, they're all pretty grounded, but but the least grounded. So it really is important that they have like a daily routine, that they have an office to go to, that there are people that they see or like some kind of routine if they're maybe in a more diplomatic role or you know an advisor role is what I would say. Um, and and the way you know them, especially from INTP is the love of trial and error like oh let's just try this and see let's pull another like trick out of my bag and and see what happens and again as with the other istps like this physicality that's there that the intp usually is not going to have um so it really is this trial and error approach and this like the, the especially of all the istps they're so not wedded to particular models they might be wedded to particular methods that they've learned to trust but they're just like, yeah, we're going to blend a little of this modern, a little bit of that model over there. And, and they're so not purists in, in the, their introverted thinking, um, which can make them for really like interesting, like philosophical discussions and, and all of that. Like they can also be very, not just spiritual, but philosophical. Yeah, that trial and error, wanting to tinker with things and that kinesthetic, uh, I'm just going to try it out and see what happens and adjust. Yeah. 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 And and sometimes this is literally like there's a person on my table and I'm a chiropractor. I'm going to make an adjustment and see what happens. Um, I mean, I, I'm making it sound like it's off the cuff, but really they know what they're doing. Um, and, and that can extend also to, you know, just like, say there, there are like a, a psychologist or counselor or something like that, that they can also be like oh let me say something or do something and, and notice how the person responds like with their eyes and with their hands and their body language and all of that which weirdly is also something that say an enfp would do very easily because enfp is mm -hmm. taken all of this data very quickly and notice like oh the person is like tensing in a weird way like what's up with that istp is like oh i noticed the person is tensing in a weird way um and and it means this mm -hmm. Yeah, they can read the room or interpret your body language. Or do they even notice if you have awkward body language? It's like, oh, interesting. Why is that person having a shoulder up like that? Oh. Yeah, yeah. And and it's interesting that you mentioned something like read the room because they, they can read the room and they literally don't care to adjust to it. So this is another way to know ISTP, similar to INTP, except I think the ISTP is more aware of the like read the room kind of stuff. Um, is is they don't want to change their pace to match what other people are doing this is like the rebellion against extroverted feeling it's like oh yeah and my like i do care about helping people but in terms of just like fake social interactions like no i don't care um and, and that doesn't mean that they, because they've read the room that they want to go and talk to anybody there or put on a show or anything like that no that makes so much sense and so i'm curious dario what are the themes that all istp share regardless of their subtype 
Um, yeah, so the, the idea with the themes is sort of exploring, like if we had to explain how an oak tree is different from an apple tree is different from a palm tree. Uh, this is like, what are the different themes, the different qualities that are there? I would say like, if we had to put it in one phrase, they're hands-on problem solvers. It's like hands-on uh, and, and sort of uh, adjust trial and error as we go. They're very, very close observers and the observation is very fast. Um, that, that there's, and there's a focus on how does this work? work in, in not just like a principle behind the scenes like INTP would have, but like literally like what is the method that they're using? Uh, what, what is the process that they're engaged in? Like how does A lead to B? Um, and, and they can, they do have this patience too to take things apart um, and to poke at them, to understand them. Yes, the joke is true. They may not necessarily be able to put it back together again. That's not as interesting. Um, INTJ is more like, give me the parts and let me create, like, I'm going to look at the Lego box and I'm going to maybe make the thing that's on the cover of the Lego box, but let me make my own thing. Um, ISTP can do that too, but ISTP also just enjoys like taking things apart, like real world things and, and understanding how they work. Um, so there really is this talent for using their hands and using tools. Sometimes I, I, I don't want to give like over stereotype, but of course there are ISTPs who are not so physical tool based um, that maybe they're more like uh, like a fashion designer, for example. So maybe they, they do know how to use their hands at a sewing machine, um, or, but, but that's not their focus. You know, their focus is then move more to the design, like choices of it. So they, they've, in terms of like the job hierarchy, they're a little bit more in the, like they made their success. So somebody else can sew it and put it together. Um, they, they can get to that space. Um, I, I think really, really important thing. This is true of all the IT types, um, all four of them. But I think ISTP in particular, please shut up. Not, I mean, that's what they're thinking. They're just like, what are you babbling about? Um, this is not related to reality at all. Uh, what, what do you want me to do? I, I don't understand. Um, ju just say it. Uh, and then this ability to follow their own path. So the independence part of it. Um, and, and just really, really like this, this, like they can't help but be independent. And they're not trying to be rebellious or something. Uh, and, and I mention this because if we look at five-factor model, and the research they've done with that and the way they characterize it from the research that the ideal type in five or the, the ideal sort of profile in five factor model is the equivalent in MBTI of like a non-neurotic ENFJ, which means that the rebellious ISTP, and this also comes out uh, in, in the five factor model data. Somebody has done this, like they did, they did factor analysis of, of these like giant groups of data. And they saw like, yeah, there's like a, older female ENFJ kind of person who's very wise and mature. And then there's this other group which has a lot of like young men in it who are sort of like basically ISTPs um, who are not so conscientious or agreeable and like do their own thing and are so introverted and rude. Um, they're just being themselves. Um, and they're just like, I need space. So I, this is the type more than the others that needs like their cave or their space. Um, and, and yeah, they probably, you know, male to female ratio is like two to one. Uh, so you male ISTPs come to mind, but I know female ISTPs too. Female ISTPs can be many times in my experience, many of the same interests is, is their male counterparts. Um, and uh, they, they do things a little bit more their own way and are probably a little bit more either on the creative or harmonizing side of things. That's the great thing about the, the subtypes, um, being able to name that. And then this idea of hunches and they talk about intuition as a thing. Like they're not unaware of it usually. Like they're not like I get hunches about things. I have like intuitive insights. I can use my intuition. Um, at the same time, they're also going to have this, what I call like uh, like pessim pessimism or like darkly cynical sense of humor or dark forecasting. Oh, all well, these people are going to die. Like just wait, uh, you'll see. Um, I mean, it, it's excessive, like, uh, a sort of like a dark sense of humor and, uh, this like a dark forecasting of the future. Um, and that's just part because it's their third function. It's, it's not always going to play out. 
uh, in, in a helpful way. Um, and I, I think something to know about them is that they really get a kick. Yes, I mean, they, they make their own discoveries, but it's about sharing their discoveries, like being a teacher and passing on their wisdom and knowledge to somebody else. Um, this is why it was so important when I wrote the Teaching Tales book that one of them, the, the female ISTP landscape artist, um, who is in the airplane crash and has to survive with the kid. And, and it's really, she comes towards the end of having at first being cynical about how it's going to turn out. Oh, a kid is not going to keep up in the wilderness and this and that to really experiencing the joy of passing on her knowledge and, and sharing her knowledge and, and how to stuff with somebody else. So I think when an ISTP has the, that ability to pass it on to somebody who really can really pass it on to, like that's a like secret joy for them. Um, and then probably the one, one thing to keep in mind that, that maybe is not so obvious is that they can get through really, really difficult situations, war, car accident, disaster, all of these kinds of things, and like really keep their head on straight. Zombie apocalypse, like you want, you want your Daryl ISTP in your corner for sure. Like 100%, you want this person in your corner. Um, but it does actually have an impact on them. And it impacts their psyche. And when we talk more about the SPs, we're going to see this, that the introverted intuiting is like, no, 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 no. You don't get to get away with, with pretending it had no effect on you or just being hard-headed about it, that, that the whole psyche gets activated by these powerful emotional experiences, although they may not experience them as emotional at the time. And then it comes around and like bubbles up again in, in a way that they're like, oh God, I have to deal with this like dark intuitive side of myself. ISTPs, they do like to figure things out for themselves first. So they'll, they'll attempt to try to figure it out first and foremost in their own mind before asking anyone yeah. for most ISTPs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, ISTPs like that opportunity to use their tactical skill sets, whether in a actual physical activity or in a video game, but having a chance to utilize that reaction time in the moment, whether it's in a safe space or doing something fun. So you also mentioned ISTPs being good in a crisis and mm -hmm. they can seem like it's not affecting them that much when it really is, but it's just more hidden within their expression. Like you don't really see it, but it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, I, I hope that with the subtypes, people will see that the, the overalls, the sensing types are actually far more rich and like have more dimensions and facets than the stereotypes give them that that actually that each one of these is not a crisp box but it's a different side of istp and that every istp can access these different sides if they sort of throw themselves into this environment percept profession like lifestyle um and that it actually is is very multifaceted type yeah type is dynamic so thank you for shedding a light on that especially for the sensing types who need that in their profiles you're helping give them proper representation and so feel free to check out dario's book about the 64 subtypes i have it linked below and yeah thank you so much for this and your wisdom Lovely. thank you, you all around. take care <music>